Hello and welcome to Fairfield University at Cook Field. I'm Ryan Canfield alongside CJ Arena. You're listening to WVOF Sports. Where we have the Fairfield Stags hosting the Canisius Golden Griffs for the first game of a three-game set over the weekend. We should have a good one here today, folks. The Stags come into this game 10-15 and 15 on the year. They're 3-0 and 0 in the conference. They are 6-3 and 3 at home on the season. Canisius, on the other hand, 7-15, and 1-2 and in the conference, 6-13 and 13 on the road. CJ, our starting pitchers today for Fairfield, Blake Helmsetter for Canisius, Peyton Kutzigli. Let's start with Helmsetter. How has he been this season? Uh, Helmsetter has definitely been the anchor um, to the starting pitching rotation. Um, coming over from Iona um, in his last outing, uh, actually pitching against his former school at in Iona. Uh, went five innings, 11 hits, five earned, two walks, and four strikeouts. Did get the win against the Iona Gales. On the season, he's looking at 34 innings pitched um, and 37 strikeouts. So that's about uh, a little bit over nine strikeouts um, per nine innings, which is very serviceable out here in the MAC. And to flip the script, uh, Peyton Consigli really is the anchor down to this uh, Golden Griff starting rotation as well. Um, freshman year, he was MAC reliever of the year and rookie of the year, making 22 appearances. Kind of took a back seat in his sophomore season, making only 13 appearances and 24 innings pitch. Uh, but Ryan, in his last outing against Manhattan, he went five innings, five hits two earned uh, and one walk and six strikeouts. So it's definitely going to be an interesting pitching game today. The wind is swirling out here in the Stag Dome. Um, expect if there's any fly balls or pop-ups, uh, maybe a little bit of chaos. Uh, we had a little talk with Garrett Kingston, pitching coach for the Stags, and he said look for a breaking ball heavy approach from the Stags today, which I think with the wind, should fare well and should get a lot of rollovers and hopefully a lot of outs. And we cannot under underestimate the strength of the wind. It's about 40, 45 degrees here. The wind is absolutely swirling. Our papers are blowing left and right here on the desk. And we would be re you, I think you were spot on. We'd be remiss to not bring it up because it is truly absolutely whipping here. Uh, the starting nine for the Canisius Golden Griffs. Leading off would be first baseman Carlin Dick. Then we have Jackson Strong. Cole Sebastian batting three, Mike DeStefano in the cleanup spot, Trent Rumley batting fifth, Thomas Zarecki, the catcher in the sixth spot, Tommy Sheridan, the designated hitter, batting seven, Kenny Dotson and J.C. Spinoza rounding out the nine for Canisius. For the Fairfield Stags, it's pretty much chalk. Luke Namora at the top, Dean Ferrara batting two, Matt Bergevin in the three spot, Ethan Hibbard been one of the best hitters in the nation and certainly the best hitter in the MAC in the early going in the cleanup spot. Zach Selinger in the five, Peyton Walruck in the sixth, Matt Bouchiero, Matt Lucier, and Paul Catalano will round out the lineup for the Fairfield Stags here on this Friday afternoon. And the one thing I also want to stress, and I know we just talked about the wind, is um, it has rained a lot over the past couple of days here in Fairfield. And playing on this field and watching games on this field, this field sometimes turns into a swamp in the outfield. So any foul ball that does drop is going to stick. Um, thinking about hitting a long iron on a par five and getting it damn close to the green and just plugging. So. This is definitely a heavy-hitting Fairfield team. Um, they love showing the bats. Bergevin and Hibbert are maybe the best one-two punch in the MAC in the 3-4 spot. A lot of extra bases, so they might not be getting those, so speed might play a factor in this game. Uh, and the one last thing I'll bring up, Canisius' home field is a turf field. I'm very interested to see how they play in the windy conditions on a dirt and grass field after dropping a series to Manhattan last weekend at home. And after the monsoon we had a couple days ago, the grass and the field should be playing slower today, which is a, a major contrast to what Canisius has with their turf. We're going to step aside for a moment. Don't go anywhere. We have the national anthem, and then we'll be right back for first pitch here at WVOF Sports.
Welcome back to Fairfield, Connecticut. Here at Fairfield University, it's Cookfield. I'm Ryan Canfield alongside CJ Arena. Today, we have Fairfield versus Canisius, the beginning of a three-game set. Blake Helmsetter, the lefty, steps on the mound for Fairfield. Once again, the top three hitters in the Canisius order today, Carlin Dick, Jackson Strong, and Cole Sebastian. But while Helmsetter warms up, let's, how did Fairfield get here? Fairfield on the season, they're 10 and five, but they started the season 0 and 10. They are 10 and five in their last 15, six and three ho uh, at home overall this season. Now they're in the midst of a 17 game homestand. They were supposed to play on the road at St. John's for a midweek game earlier in the week. However, it got rained out, which has allowed them for the homestand. Neither of these two teams played any games during the week due to weather related issues. CJ, as you mentioned the Open, Canisius coming off, dropping two of three to Manhattan over the weekend. Fairfield undefeated uh, in MAC play, one of four teams to remain undefeated in MAC play in the early going. They swept Iona over the weekend, outscoring them 28 to seven. Yeah, and I'll also add in uh, their game against UMass. Uh, I believe they're supposed to play them on Wednesday. That game also got canceled because of the rain, um, or should I call it a nor'easter that happened here in Fairfield County. Uh, yeah, I mean, just the one thing to stress on is we're, we're in the stag dome, you win. And I think establishing home field and, you know, Paul Conalano I know has played in this outfield since sophomore year, so he knows this win, and I think a lot of the guys know what's going to be happening here. So let's see, uh, stepping in the box. Carlin Dick steps into the box, the leadoff hitter for the, for the Griffs. Lefty on lefty, helm setter, the first pitch. It is a fastball for a strike, 0-1. Oh Dick on the season, batting 266. He has seven home runs. He can jump you a 570 slug percentage, and he gets on base at a 442 clip. And that'll be a swing and a miss for strike two. Good off speed there by Helmstetter. 0-2, oh see what Hever calls. Helmstetter. Fires, fastball outside, one and two. I would expect a change up here from Helmsetter. He's thrown in a lot in the, in the warm ups. Outfield playing Dick straight up. Helmsetter delivers the 1 2. Fouled to the first base side to the Stags dugout. Stepping in on the outfield grass for Fairfields, Zach Sellinger, the second baseman, playing deep, respecting Dick's power. Helm setter. Fast ball high, two and two. Really good eye by Dick in this at bat. Really not chasing up and out. Let's see what Helm setter does here with two two. Fast ball heavy so far. The two two. Swung on, pop fly, and here we go. Going back is Sellinger coming in. Bouchiero, the right fielder, makes the catch. Really good off speed by Helm setter to get Dick to pop out. That was a shaky one, like we said before. This wind's gonna swirl. It's died down now, but the minute it swirls up and we have Jackson Strong stepping in now, which Jackson Strong is the heart and soul of this Canisius team. Strong hitting 398, by far the best on the, on the Canisius roster. He has seven home runs, slugging nearly 700. The breaking ball for the first pitch from Helmsetter in for a strike. Strong getting on base at a oh, incredible 515 clip. Strong a lefty. He's going to take another strike. Helm set her up 0-2 again. He can really do anything here. He could spin one, put a change up at Strong's feet. Helm set her. Delivers outside fastball 1-2. and two. Really struggling to get a ball out there. That second pitch was right on the black. That one was a little bit off. The 1-2. Fastball outside, he gets the call, and Strong goes down looking. It's really big to establish that. If Strong got on there, it wouldn't have shocked me if he had stolen as well. Strong, with 17 stolen bases on the year, is tied for eighth in the nation. Helmsetter retires the first two, stepping up to the plate now. Cole Sebastian, the left fielder, batting 217 for the Golden Griffs. He has four home runs, getting on base at 300. First pitch in there for a strike. So as I said before, Helmsetter getting the outside corner on those lefties. Now we're seeing Sebastian as a righty. Helmsetter just puts one on the inside. 
Helmsetter's 0-1 inside. Sebastian turns out of the way, 1-1. One one. Sebastian kind of with an Anthony Rizzo type approach, really crowding the plate. I would really like Helmsetter to throw a change up here, kind of get one out, dying away. And that'll be a fastball inside for a strike one and two on the Griff left fielder. Expect a roll over here from Helmsetter. Helmsetter's one, two. Inside again. Turning away, Sebastian, two and two. Zach Selling drew the second baseman, shading right to the right side of the second base bag. Here comes a 2-2. And really? a late, late swing. And that'll be a strikeout, the second one of the inning for Helmsetter. Really good change up there from Helmsetter. So that'll be a 1-2-3 two, first, two strikeouts for the Stags lefty. We'll be back in the bottom of the first. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the bottom of the first inning where we have Peyton Consigli, the 6'5 right-hander out of Font Hill, Ontario, will take the mound and he will be tasked with an explosive top of the order for the Stags. Luke Namura stepping into the box. The leadoff hitter for the Stags started all 25 games, batting 319 on the year. Namura, righty on righty. Consigli's first pitch, it's rolled over, foul down the third base line. I'm interested to see how the righty hitters for the Fairfield Stags are going to fare against Peyton Consigli. He's very over the top, um, boasting a fastball two-seam, change-up slider, curve mix. But in the warm-ups, it seemed like he really could snap down on that curveball. So very interesting to see how the Stags are going to attack. Nomura stepping back into the box. Down 0-1. Takes a fastball inside. Count 1-1. One and one. There's that two-seamer. Consigli wasting no time. Fires. Off speed down low. No more spits on it. Two and one. Nomura on the season slugging 500. He's left the yard three times as he takes ball number three. Consigli falling behind early to the Stags leadoff hitter. And that is high. Ball four. R really good approach there by Nomura. Um... Really wasn't biting on anything inside there. Nomura has stolen six bases on the year, been thrown out twice. <clears throat> Stepping up, the Stags' third, base, third baseman to the plate, Dean Ferrara. Ferrara batting 369 on the year, one home run. Nomura leads off first. Consigli's pitch high, 1-0. 
Really pinching up the middle for the Canisius. Shortstop in second base, and now we're shading off to the right. There's a huge hole between short and third. There's a massive hole in the right center gap as well. The pitch, and it's bounced. Nomura's going to take off for second. The throw is into the outfield. Then it goes to center field, but is going to stay put at second. So Nomura, with a good dirt ball read, is going to advance. It's a really good read on 1-0. As soon as that pitch hits the dirt, Nomura took off. And that was an errant throw from catcher Tom Mizurecki. Really good backup by DeStefano to be there and pinch in from center field because that could have been Nomura on third very quickly. So Ferrara up 2-0. He's going to take a strike, 2-1. and one. Nomura leads off second. Ferrara, the third baseman, stands at the plate. Righty on righty. The pitch. He shows bunt, pulls it back. Nomura retreats the second. Count three and one. I love that approach from uh, Coach Currier there, showing bunt from Ferrara. 3-1, gets in a really good hitter's count. Got to move Nomura over here. Consigli's 3-1. Swung on, it's a tapper. Tapper, Nomura waits. The throw from Zarecki is in time. So they'll get Ferrara at first, and they'll hold Nomura at second. That was essentially an unsuccessful swinging bunt. Yeah, it's very interesting. Nomura didn't even even try to get to third. Um, it took a while for Zarecki to get out from behind the dish um, and a shaky throw to first as well. So a little bit of an interesting inning so far for Zarecki. Matt Bergevin, the Stag first baseman, will step up to the plate. Bergevin batting 323. He has 11 home runs on the season. Bergevin is going to take a breaking ball in for a strike. Falls behind 0-1. Expect Consigli to go very off-speed heavy here against Bergevin. I wouldn't give him any fastball inside that he could crank. Bergevin is a very good eye. He's taking 20 walks, 442 on base. That's an off-speed high, 1-1. One one. Second baseman playing pretty much right behind the second base bag, trying to hold on to Murrah. Count 1-1. One one. That's a breaking ball in for a strike. One and two to the Stags three hitter. Bergeron, that's a huge gap between second and first. If he takes one of those off speeds into that gap, it could be home for Nomura. Consigli's one, two, fouled back into the parking lot and nearly into the bed of a pickup truck. We have a zero, zero score here in the first inning. One, two in the count, one out on Matt Bergevin. Luke Namor is at second. Helm setter for the stag to pitch to one, two, three. Consigli trying to dance his way out of trouble. His pitch, breaking ball, and that'll be a looking strikeout for Bergevin. The first K of the day for Consigli. Like we said earlier, Ryan, the Stags team runs on offense, and it'd be a shame if Ferrara, Bergevin, and Haber go down here, leaving a man on base to start this game. And no exaggeration, Ethan Hibbard, the Stags catcher cleanup hitter, has been maybe the best hitter in the MAC. He's batting an incredible 454 with 12 home runs, slugging over 900 as he takes a ball outside 1 0. Hibbard is getting on base at a 534 clip. It's a video game numbers, Ryan. The pitch from Consigli fouled back into the screen. Count 1 and 1. And the Stags are going to need someone to step up. After losing Charlie Paglarini, Mike Pachetti, Griffin Watson, those are three of the top four hitters for the Stags last year. Bergevin's the only holdover from the top four, and Hibbard has broken out in a big way. Consigli's 1-1. That'll be inside. He's going to catch the part of the plate. That was a breaking ball. Hibbard nods his head. Count one and two. Dodson's still playing behind second base, which is a very interesting strategy. The outfield just shifted over to their left or right. The one-two, this will be a fly ball to right field. Camping under it and making the play Jackson is Strong. Jackson Strong. So Strong puts it away. Consigli dances his way out of trouble. And after one, we are scoreless here in Fairfield.
Welcome back to Fairfield University. We have a one to nothing or a, a zero zero ball game, excuse me, at the conclusion of the first. We're in the top of the second. Blake Helmsetter after a one, two, three first inning. Uh, wow, the wind guard literally just blew off my mic because of the gust of wind that we just got. The wind is in the past two seconds really picked up. Helmsetter is going to have to deal with the four, five, six hitters for Canisius. That'll be Mike DeStefano, Trent Rumley, and Thomas Zarecki. The first pitch outside. It's the cleanup hitter for the Griffs. 1-0. Helmsutter still loving that outside. I really love this lefty on lefty matchup that we keep having with this Canisius lineup. DeStefano batting 281 on the year as he takes a strike to even the count at 101. DeStefano, he's hit three home runs and he gets on base 367. He is a threat to go if he gets on. He's stolen 11 bags on the year and has not been caught once. Helmsetter's 1-1, one, one, down and away, 2-1. This Canisius lineup doesn't catch up to the outer half lefty-wise to Helmsetter. It might be a quick day for the Stags. This is the first hitter Helmsetter has fallen behind all day long. That breaking ball is hit to Bergman. Bergman with the backhand pick. Underhand flips to Helmsetter in time for the first out. So that'll do it for DeStefano. Stepping up to the plate, the five hitter. And third baseman Trent Rumley. Bromley on the season, batting 284 for the Golden Griffs. He's left the yard just once, gets on base at a 370 clip. The right-hander takes in a strike on the inside part of the plate, 0 and 1. Definitely go back to that pitch if you were Helmsetter here. Helmsetter moving with pace inside, 1 and 1. I cannot believe the wind guard was blown off the microphone. It's an interesting play. I mean, you still sound great as always, Ryan. Thank you. Count 1 and 1, 1 out. We have a 0-0 ball game here in the top of the second. Helmsetter deals low and inside, 2-1. and one. Just a good change up there from Helmsetter. Interesting to see what it does here, 2-1. and one. Everything's been inside. It's interesting that Canisius has three lefties in their top four hitters as Helmsetter, the lefty, on the mound for the Stags. Helmsetter delivers. This is a ground ball just fouled on the left field line, 2-2. Two and two. I came off hot. I would go to an off-speed breaking ball here by Helmsetter. Rumley seems to have the best read on Helmsetter of any of the Canisius hitters thus far. Really not biting on anything inside. When Sebastian struck out, he was biting on those. Rumley is going to hit one into the, into the right center gap, and that is going to be caught! What an unbelievable diving catch by Matt Bouchiero in right field. That is a way to play the win by Bouchiero. Great jump off the bat, diving to his right, and he's dapped up by Paul Conolato. That was an incredible diving catch. It looked like that had a hot date for an easy double and maybe a triple if that gets by him, but that was a full extension Superman dive to take an extra base hit away from Rumley. Helmsetter threw that curveball, like I said, but Rumley just chopped all over it. That ball was hit well. But no results for Rumley. Stepping up to the plate, the catcher Thomas Zarecki. He's going to take a ball up 1-0. and oh. That was really an incredible catch by Bouchiero. Helmsetter's 1-0. -oh. He's going to drop in for a strike. Five up, five down for the Stags. Two strikeouts in the early going for Helmsetter. Bouchiero doing his best to ensure that there will be no base runners here in the early going. This will be a pop fly into the parking lot. And this ball is ticketed for the front windshield of a car. That's why we park in the garage, Ryan. That's why we park in the garage. Did not sound good either. It looked like he got the front hood of a gray Jeep. Nonetheless, Helmsetter's up 1-2. Two. two outs, and that'll be a ball outside 2-2. Two two. Zarecki, the catcher, batting 246 on the season. Gets on base 352. No home runs from the backstop. Very open stance. Helmsetter, 2-2, two, two. check swing. They check, no good. It was a ball low, 3-2. So Zarecki's going to work the count full. It was a good put-away pitch there by uh, Helmsetter, and Zarecki just didn't bite on it. Thought about it. An incredibly wide stance for Zarecki. Really open. Helmsetters, 3-2, swung on, grounds at the third. Ferrara steps into it, fires over to Bergman. Bergman with the pick, he bobbles it. So that'll be an E5, and Zarecki will be the first Canisius base runner of the day. 
I mean, we saw last inning, Zarecki, I wouldn't say is the fastest guy out here, but Ferrara took his grand all time with that ball and just threw it a little bit short for Bergevin and couldn't dig it out. Bergevin's going to say he should have picked that, and Ferrara's going to say he should have made a better throw. And as we mentioned, catchers aren't necessarily fleet of foot, so there was plenty of time to make the play. So with a man on first and two outs, stepping up to the plate, the designated hitter, Tommy Sheridan. Sheridan, first pitch, pop up, foul territory, and that's going to fall into the Rafferty Stadium turf. And this is Fairfield's first error of the game. Coming into the game, they're averaging 1.32 errors per game. So the sloppy play tends to continue for the Stags. We had head coach Bill Curry on Stags in the studio for an interview, and they lost their first six games. And he said, we've been hitting, but the problem has been really our defense. We've been given too many free passes, and that ball's going to get past Hibbard. It was a fastball that snuck right through his leg. So Zarecki will advance the second easy, and that's a 1-1 count on Sheridan. Just didn't get his glove down fast enough for Hibbard. It's very argued amongst baseball communities. Should catchers be up on their two feet, down on one knee? Hibbard was down on one knee. It might have handcuffed him to get to that fastball, and especially fastballs in the dirt. Just got to knock it down, and Hibbard did not do that. So he'll be charged with a pass ball. Zarecki on second base, two outs. The breaking ball in for a strike throws Tommy Sheridan. But going back to what Courier said, he said, we really struggled with giving out free passes and giving teams extra outs, and that's just something you cannot do at the college level. The one-two from Helmsetter. This would be grounded. That was an inside pitch. He really turned on it foul. We're going to be seeing a lot more of those today, Ryan. Foul balls down the third baseline. Helmsetter is peppering the inner half to righties and the outer half to lefties. And as logic would imply, it really does appear the righties have a much better look at Helmsetter than the lefties do and have a much more success. Helm setters 2-2, and that's going to drill him. Hit him right in the shin, right above the ankle. So what could have been out of the inning on an easy ground ball, we have a pass ball that allows Zarecki to second, and then a hit by pitch. And this is exactly what Coach Courier was talking about earlier in the season. Can't give out free passes or you're going to get burned. The second baseman, Kenny Dodson, will step up, will step up to the plate. Dodson is hitting 0-6-7 on the year. Helmsetter's 0-0 inside, 1-0. I would really like to see Helmsetter with Dotson not being the strongest hitter this season, just put one outside and let Dotson roll over. No reason to not attack here. First and second, two outs. 0-0 zero, zero ball game. Dotson's going to foul one back on the Rafferty. Looked like a two-seamer there. I'd go back to that if I was Helmsetter. It doesn't seem like Dotson's going to catch up to it. Dotson, a right-handed hitter. Helmsetter fires the 1-1, one, one, and that'll be a strike that clips the top of the zone. Fastball, 1-2. and two. A lot of groans after that one, Ryan. Hibbert brought that thing back down like it was his job. Really good frame job by Hibbert. 1-2, and two, two outs. 0-0, zero, zero, first and second. Helmsetter looking to get out of trouble. Checks the runners. Fires, breaking ball. Good job by Dotson to fight it off. It looks like Helmsetter on his way to another 1-2-3, now having to dance out of a little bit of trouble. Runners in scoring position already. Not the most conventional rally for Canisius, but here we are. The 1-2. Strikeout looking. A great fastball on the inside part of the plate. We'll set Dotson back to the dugout, and Helmsetter maintains his shutout. So here we are, 0-0, heading into the bottom of the second. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Fairfield University, where the Fairfield University Stags are in a 0-0 ball game here in the early going against Canisius Golden Griffs. Helmsetter got into it out of his trouble, but Bouchiero bailed him out with an incredible catch early. The error from Ferrara and the hit by pitch he works around. So now on the other side will be Peyton Kutzigli, who's got to work for work through the five, six, seven hitters. Zach Sellinger, Peyton Walruck, and Bouchiero. And Sellinger will swing at the first pitch. That'll be a foul ball onto Rafferty. It was really self-inflicted, the damage from Fairfield last inning. So let's see if the offense can turn it around and avenge it. Sellinger had a great series against Iona. Brought his overall numbers on the season up to 318 batting average, 455 slug. Gets on base at a 467 clip. A really good eye for Sellinger. He's down 0-2, though, here to Consigli. When Chuck Consigli goes curveball here. Sellinger choked up on the bat. Consigli, he does go curveball, and that'll be fought off by Sellinger. Good piece of hitting to stay alive. Might have been a sign to shake for Consigli, kind of throw Sellinger off for a little bit. Sellinger is a funky stance. He tilts his bat forward almost in front of his batting helmet, and he's going to let one fly down the left field line. Sellinger, it's going to drop foul. Probably about 15 feet in front of the foul pole. It's going to drop, but Sellinger gave it a ride. But he'll step back in the box. So the wind actually died down before that pitch, and it was fading left. And I think if the wind had swirled, that ball would have been fair. So Sellinger still down 0-2. He's fouled off every pitch. And this ball is a deep fly ball, center field. The wind will knock it down. Camping under it, center fielder Mike DiStefano. So the grad student puts it away, and that'll be one down. For Consigli. Stepping up to the plate will be Peyton Warrock. Warrock batting 462. He's only had five starts this season, slugging 654. No home runs, getting on base 481. The lefty steps in. He's going to take a breaking ball high from Consigli. We saw that in the first inning. Consigli not snapping down on his curveball, and that happened again right there. So it's interesting to see what he's going to do next. And that'll be a fastball up and away, 2-0 and oh on Warruck. Just can't seem to get those pitches down. Warruck definitely playing with fire here. And this will be a line drive base hit for Warruck. Takes advantage of the 2-0. He'll round first and can take back, and that'll be a base hit. So the sophomore gets on base, and that'll bring up Matt Bouchiero. Bouchiero with what was simply an incredible catch last inning. I can't really say it enough. The, the catch probability on that was not high. Wouldn't shock me if you see that uh, on SportsCenter tomorrow morning, Ryan, drinking your cup of coffee. The sophomore outfielder will take a 